Yeah, man, it's your boy Trouble's a Young Demon fucking with Refuse Media. They just lined me up for the free throw. Tap in, you hear me? Refuse to fuck with the media, but I had to tap in with my people, man. Refuse Media, that interview coming soon. They just lined me up for the free throw, you hear me? Yeah. Do be on the lookout. Oh. Yeah, 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 yeah. Had it with it, though. I'm that boy, Top Shelf Jock. We back with another one. Oh, yeah, I'm back, nigga. Got my boy Young Demon, homie. What's happening with you, boy? Stop playing. We finna get this interview cracking, nigga. Yeah, it's your boy Trovis the Young Demon, 16, hottest king doing this. Stop playing with me, man. <coughs> I ain't gotta say much. Yeah, yeah. Y'all already know what's going on. I know y'all been wondering, but let's just get it cracking, my nigga. Young Demon, where we get this name from, man? Basically. That's a demonic ass name, nigga. Where we get that from? Basically, like, I'm young, you feel me? So, Young Demon, young because I'm young, and Demon because. It, the world is basically ran by a demonic world the way I see you for me. Mm -hmm. So if you do, it's basically a lot of negative vibes of bad energy. So if you turn all that bad energy and bring it into a positive vibe and good energy, I feel like everything should be good. So that's why I named myself Young Demon because I turn all my negative things into positive things. That's an interesting way of looking at it. <laughs> that's an interesting way of looking at it. Make sure you express that though. Like in your music, your projects. Uh, because they paying attention. So when they hear a name like Young Demon, for marketing value, you want to let them know that. Hold up. It's like a name like Young Hate. I'm not saying I hate nobody or hate or nobody hate me. I'm just saying what we in, let me turn this negative to a positive. And yeah. with you, you know what I'm saying? Being a youngster in this game and me being an older nigga, when I see something, I try to hold up. Let me pull your coattail. Because look, I'm going to give you an example. It was a rapper named Uncle Murder. Uncle Murder. He got to cracking, right? Yeah. But Target and Walmart and the websites, they wouldn't sell his album because his name was Murder. Because they so, thought it was a bad energy, bad vibes, right? Exactly. So they had to, he had to change his name to Uncle M. Uncle M. You feel me? For so Uncle I'm, Murder. Exactly. So I'm just pulling your coattail on that one. Uh, as far as, I like to, I like to, I like to put my young niggas on, up on game as far as the money go. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Because that's know? basically what I'm all about. Like, if we ain't talking money, like, I'm basically a businessman, you feel me? I don't got time to waste people's time. Yeah. I don't like wasting people's time, so if I don't like wasting people's time, I don't like my time being wasted. So, right now, everything, it got to be going, you know? I'm trying to yeah. stay consistent with the game, everything. Do your, your, do your shit. I feel it. I feel it. Now, this is interesting. How long you been getting down? How long you been rapping? Man, I just started basically last year, so you could say about a year and a half by now. I just started when I was 15. I was rapping out of my homie's studio. We had our own little studio going. You feel me? We was recording tracks in just for fucking around, but a lot of them thought I was just fucking around. You know, I wasn't taking it really serious the way I am right now. Back then, I just thought of it like as a little game, like a little hobby, but then... Nigga, you only 16? Yeah. That's <laughs> only yeah, that's 16. crazy, bruh. So when you was 15, you decided to rap. Correct. What made, what made you make that decision? What made you say, I want to rap? Basically, I was influenced my whole life about, like, basically my pops was, was around the music a little bit, my uncles was around the music a little bit, so it kind of motivated me. The homies was being musicians, I had homies I was rapping, so I was just studying them out, listening to them out, and I was like, alright, I'm going to just run with my flow and I'm going to come up with my flow. I think I could do this shit myself. So then I hopped in the booth when I was 15, heard myself. I was like, it's game over, I'm gonna run with it. When you heard your voice? When I was 15. Mm. That's very interesting. That's very interesting you say that. Okay, 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 that's what's up. Now, um, the first, first single, not the last one you just sent me, but the one that, the one that everybody know. Grimy, slimy. You talking <laughs> about that grimy? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah. Let's talk about that. Um, what was the vibe in the studio? Who was in the studio? Um, Basically, I had all my boys in the studio, and I ain't even gonna lie, I was off a little drink. Mm -hmm. So when I hopped in the booth, <laughs> so when I hopped in the booth, I heard the beat different. Mm -hmm. So when I heard the beat different, it's like, all right, I'm in my zone. So when I got in my zone, it was game over. The hook was on point, the verses was on point, everything was on point. So I guess y'all could say that that was my hit. That, Everybody rocking with it, grind me, slime me, yeah. come and try me. Nah, that one hit the scene. That one hit the scene. You grabbed the youngster's attention. Uh, 
Um, that's what's up. And so, what's crazy about it is I'm only 16 doing this, and a lot of people don't know. A lot of people be trying to say that I'm lying about my age. Like, nah, I don't got nothing to lie about, you feel me? Yeah. I already whipped on my date of birth, so <laughs> when I did that, it was like, all right, this dude's really 16. Like, And then once I did that, it's like a lot of people started respecting me more because when I first came in the game, there was, I don't know, I'm pretty sure a couple people remember, but I was game banging at a moment. Mm -hmm. I was game banging at How a moment. How old was you at that time? About 14, 15. Okay. I was trying to get into a path that wasn't for me, you feel me? From what, out of what city? Wilmington. Okay. So basically, shout out to my city too, by the way. Shout out to Wilmington, Harvard area, that's my city. So um, basically, a lot of people don't know how Wilmington is ran. So Wilmington is ran only with two hoods, the east and the west. You got the east and you got the west. But me, my whole life, I grew up on the east side, you feel me? And one of the cliques, I grew up on that block my whole life, you know? So I was trying to get in that clique, being that I was seeing the OGs every single day, smoking, mm -hmm. drinking, you know? So I kind of got a, I kind of got motivated by that. But then, as I got older, I was like, man, there ain't no money into this. Like, I got to do something that's beneficial for the long run, not the short run. So then, as I got older, I was like, man, I was like, fuck, I, like, the fuck I look like letting another nigga trying to run my program, you know? Like, I'm my own man, I'm my own boss. I don't got to listen to nobody the way I see, you know? Like, yeah. if you're not putting no money on my books, I ain't got to listen to you for shit, you know? So, basically... Good decision. Basically, that's why I, I kind of distanced myself slowly but surely from that street, street life. So then, a lot of people remember when I first came in the game, I was dropping freestyles with the red rag on my neck. I had the dub beanie. You know, I was just putting on just for one sight. Cause that's when I was younger, so I wasn't really knowing, you know? But then, as I got a little older, 15, 16, start realizing shit like, all right, we all want race. Like, you start kinda, you kinda start realizing shit like, why are they doing this or why are they doing that, you know? Like, why are they killing our own people? We, yeah. we all from the same city, you know? So why do that? So then after, as nah, I got- most people your age don't, don't realize that. You kind of caught that early. Yeah, so as I got older, I was like, man, I'm gonna put all this shit in my music and I'm gonna just run with it. I'm gonna make sure like everybody knows not just one side of Wilmington, but both side of Wilmington. That's Cause I'm gonna up. put on for the whole city one way or another. That's the way I see it. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. That's what's up. Okay. You know what? I don't want to fast forward to the single now. Let's get into it. Uh, but before we get into it, I got to ask you this. Me and the wifey, Top Shelf T, we got a show called Hood Eats, right? Hood Eats. We go to all the little spots to eat in the hood. We vlog it. We give it our little, you know, ooh up. Where in Wilmington we got to go? Man, me personally, I fuck with a lot of Mexican food, you know? So I don't know if you fucking with Mexican Hell food or yeah. not. What? You feel me? So... <laughs> Shout out to Montoya's in the city on L Street in Washington. Y'all got to pull up. They got the best burritos. They going to hook you up, man. They got the fat-ass carne asada burritos with some fire-ass lemonade. Okay. And, he said and, I'm a, I'm a, and me, I'm a picky-ass eater, you know. I don't really eat nobody's food unless it's my mom's cooking or my grandma's cooking because I don't know. I don't really feel comfortable eating nobody else's cooking, you know. So I usually just eat mom's cooking or grandma's cooking. But Montoya's, that's the spot. Y'all got to try that for sure, for sure. For sure, for sure. <clears throat> we definitely gonna pull up to that, man. All right, so look. Take me back, man. Like, what kind of kid was you? What was Third Grade Demon like? Third Grade Demon, he was he was cool. He was he wasn't that bad. Like, he wasn't getting it. He was getting in trouble, but it wasn't like that major, major. You know, like I was still on my shit, like doing homework and shit, but. Then after once I got out of middle school, that's kind of when everything, that's when I was kind of going the wrong route because I was hanging around with the wrong crowd. Struggling I was ditching there. school. I wasn't, yeah. I wasn't really trying to, I was trying to be a knucklehead, you know? So that's when, that's when my name Troas came from. That's what a lot of people don't know, like me getting in trouble. I was getting in a lot of trouble, so that name was special, you know? So then after, that's when I added the Young Demon. Cho was the Young Demon. A lot of people don't know Young Demon is my stage name. And Troubles, that's just my city name, you know? So basically, I put Troubles the Young Demon. So Troubles is always going to be Troubles because I've been a little ass kid. That's all That's all they call me when I was a little kid. Troubles, you know? You got some time to grow, little so nigga. So Troubles the Young, yeah. But then, you know, like I said, the street life wasn't for me. So that's when I ran okay. with my music. And then it was game over. From then, I killed my haters with success. So let's talk about the music. You dropping a, uh, 
we working on a project or just singles? I notice I notice youngsters right now be focused on singles. Uh, right now, I just dropped two. Right now, I got Grammy, my first single out, and then I just dropped Net Talking, my second single. Y'all gotta check that out. Click the link in my bio and all that and too. The reaction in. coming too. The reaction probably that, gonna drop with this interview. So. Hey man, that shit hard. Y'all gotta check yeah. check it out, man. Stop playing. But basically, right now, I got a lot of work in the place. Right now, I got some visuals coming in. No way, I'm pretty sure you heard the little teaser that I did on my Instagram. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I'm gonna do. That. I'm gonna be getting that filmed already. Dropping that two weeks from now. And then right now I got a seven song EP that I'm working on with my new management. Shout out to shout out to my new management Jeezy and shout out to my big bro Blaze. Yeah. But yeah, man, they've been getting me right. That's how I'm here seeing you today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what I mean? Stop playing. <laughs> my boy. Okay, okay, okay. Now, uh, as far as what's going on in rap right now, man, uh, we see what's going on, man. Uh. Latinos is here strong, you know what I'm saying, and it's 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 evolving from what was considered, you know, we'll quote unquote Chicano rap, and you know the style I'm talking about. We yeah. all know what style I'm yeah, talking yeah. about, the Chicano rap. But now it's morphed into they're still Chicano rap. Yeah, there's a lot of Chicanos. And, the, and, that's and I gotta make this clear. Right I'm, now, I'm glad you brought that up too. <laughs> Because what a lot of people don't know is, and y'all might not believe me, so I don't care if y'all believe me or not, but I'm mixed, you feel me? Mm -hmm. My mom is Mexican and my dad is black. But being that I didn't really grow up, I didn't, well, my pops was around, I ain't finna talk down on his name or nothing like that, but he was around, but he wasn't really around, you get me? Yeah. Like, I grew up with my mom my whole life, like, Mama Deuce was taking care of me, all that shit, you know? That's how, she was making sure my studio sessions was good and all that. So basically, Shout out to my mom, cause she the one that birthed me and all that, you feel me? Yeah, yeah, but, yeah. But you both, like what you were saying, you mixed, okay. Yes, okay. and a lot of people don't know that, that I'm mixed, so me being mixed, like having my Mexican wave and having my black wave, I try to bring it together, cause I don't want people thinking like, oh man, he just showing love, more more love to the Mexicans, or oh, he why, why he trying to be black, you know? Like, nah, I'm mixed, so I got the right to express how I feel, you know? Yeah. Put it, like me, I'm a different artist. I try to put the Chicano rap and the black rap together, and that's how I'm killing the game right now. Because I don't <laughs> sound like nobody either. Yeah, yeah. I got yeah. my own sound. Okay, now speaking on that, which, okay, who would you say you was influenced by, like, coming up? Who did you listen to? Who do you, who do you, you know what I'm saying? Who who was you listening to, like, okay, when you 14? Like, I'm going to keep it 100. Like, I was, listen, I, w I was listening to a lot of, like, I was listening to a lot of old school rappers, the old school wave, studying them. And then I went to go study the new wave, like the Blue Faces, One Take J, Rucci. I started studying them, you know? So then after I peeped that, that new wave is kind of blowing up more. So what I did was I started studying the old wave, like Snoop Dogg, The Game, 50 Cent, you could say. Mm. And then I started. I started. <laughs> That's hilarious. I started listening to Blueface. Oh. oh. <laughs> I started listening to Blueface, okay. Young Drummer Boy, King Ooh. Little G. Okay. And a oh, lot of heavy right now. A lot of people might not know, but they Chicano rappers, so that's why I be fucking with the Ch the Chicano rap too, because the Chicano rap that they, they got some cold ass they got some cold ass rappers, man. Yeah, y'all not gonna believe them, but. They, get, they got yeah. some youngsters killing the game. No, no, they tapping me in right now. Because I said it early. I said it early. Look, when I was doing the reactions and all that, <coughs> people was telling me, like, hey, how come you, you know what I'm saying, you're not tapping in over here? I'm like, hey, I just don't know. Drop the names in the song. Yeah, like, the way I, I see it, the in. way I see it right now is Latinos, like the Chicanos, we underrated right now. Like, little do they know, it's like mm. everybody, everybody kind of gathering, trying to. I think they everybody up trying to get that. Yeah, they waking up I now because they waking up because they were sleeping on them for a minute, like trying to knock us down and stuff. Like, yo, like they would try to tell the Chicano rappers, like hip hop was oh, mainly yeah, like that, a that black, was, you know. That so was, that was that was that was going exactly on for that was kind of going on for a exactly. while. So then, but now I mean, with dudes like you, uh, little Almighty Benji, uh, King Lil G, like you said, Devour. Drummer uh, Boy. Drummer Boy. Shout out to Drummer Boy. That's a big influence for me, man. Um, damn it. Swifty Blue. <laughs> you a G. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, when I was the girl name. Uh, um, uh, Ray Monique. No, Ray Monique. But the, and then the, uh, Ray Monique, Snow the Product. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, I'm going to start needing to check out some of these female artists because I don't really be tapped in with the female artists, but like. 
I already told myself like once I'm in the like one if I make it to the industry industry I would like to do for the female artist Cardi B gonna be on my list for sure. <laughs> <laughs> They, 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 they might not believe me, but Cardi, Cardi be getting down. Y'all might not like Cardi, but she be getting down. In my opinion, I think she better than Nicki. Nigga, this is running to turn into a podcast, nigga. We finna argue. Cardi better than Nicki. Yeah, man, like, Cardi Hell B. Hell no. Cardi B been slapped Hell on. Hell no. You feel me? Not better than Nicki, nigga. Like Nikki, she, she cool. I ain't gonna talk down on Nikki because Nikki cool. Like I got bangers that I like from her that I was a little ass kid bumping her, you know? But Nikki, no, she got some but opinion. Cardi that's B. You stand but, on it, but, I had to. but like as the new wave, as I'm saying as the new wave, Cardi B, she taking over as the female new wave. Like she got the city girls. She got Cardi B. They there's a lot of upcoming female artists that are killing the game right now, so she got a lot of competition if she wanna hold her name. Yeah. Yeah, the girls is coming right now. You just opened up a whole nother motherfucking latch. <laughs> uh, you know, you know, on some real spill Holyfield. The girls is coming with it right now. And you know what? I got to say this. I done interviewed a lot of motherfuckers. My wife interviewed a lot of girls. It's been one point in time where, you know, we was doing a sway thing, like asking motherfuckers, like, you want to rap right now? Girls were stepping up to the plate. Damn, yeah, like Dude, right now in, on Instagram, I don't even know if you guys are noticing, but there's even girls starting to freestyle now off their phone yeah. and shit. Like, damn, yeah. like young ass girl, yeah. like, damn. You seen a little girl with the do rag? She be wearing the do rags? Oh, uh, yeah, and she be and rapping she be off rapping the iPhone. Yeah, yeah. It's, I see, I think, I think I tapped in right with her on the Explore page a few couple times. I tapped in with her. Yeah, 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 off the rip. Okay. What you love the most about being an artist? Shit, the feedback that I get, mm. the feedback, that's the best thing. Like when somebody swipe up on my comment, like, hey, bro, you killed this shit or like, keep going. Don't let these haters not like they giving me good ass feedback to keep pushing. So without them, like, honestly, if it wasn't for my fans, my supporters, I would have stopped rapping a long time ago. Because honestly, when I first came out, a lot of people would be like, man, you trash as hell. You're not going to make it like. This show sound like this shit whack, you know, so a lot of people would talk down and sometimes I ain't even gonna lie I would let that shit get to me like damn like what if they what if they write like what if my shit What if I'm over here wasting my time like I ain't never gonna but then I was like man fuck that shit like then that's when I dropped the Fuck a hater tell them to you <laughs> later, you know, like yeah. don't let these haters knock you man If you got a dream chase that shit. That's the best advice that I could give you man chase your dreams And don't let nobody knock you either Speaking of that, you young as shit, so it's hard to ask you this question, but I usually ask this. If you could speak to your younger self, and I'm gonna say for you, the 14 year old nigga that was finna bang, if you could speak to that nigga right now, knowing what you know now, but check this out, it ain't gonna change shit. It ain't gonna change your life. You still gonna be here with me today. It's not gonna change your days. What would you tell him to prepare him for what he finna face? Basically, just tell them stay out the way and stay out the bush and keep grinding, man. And don't let don't let another man try to knock down what you got going on, cause that's what they want. Once you let that happen, they got full control of you. Once another, once you let another man run your program, it's game over. Mm. They you up under their wing forever. Mm. Ain't no way, ain't no way you leaving that. You get me? That's yeah. why I kind of. That's why I, I would tell the young me, you know. That's why I kind of snapped out of it real quick, cause I was like, I. I'll be damned if I let a, another person run my program because right now what I'm trying to get to, I'm trying to build my own little empire. Me as a youngin, I'm trying to live. Nipsey, Nipsey, long live Nip, man. He was a big ass inspiration for me. Like him owning his own business in his own hood, him putting money into it. That's kind of what I want to do, you know? Yeah. And that's what a lot of people don't know, but they're going to see it coming soon. For sure. For sure, for sure. What you will say? Thus far, in your category, what you would say the realest shit you ever wrote? Just reality rap. Right? Like, like the realest shit that I ever wrote? Real, nigga. Then what you, I mean, I know every song. Cause you know well, right now, that shit ain't even dropped. So, but I got some cold ass shit, like some hard ass, like some shit that y'all gonna relate to. And I named that shit Cold Nights. Y'all seen the little teaser to it too? When they took my big bro, Money, Free my boy money. When they took him, it was like, damn, I gotta push my music. Like, I gotta get him out there. Like, he in the hell cell right now, you know? He's still there right now, but uh, he, he good right now. He gonna be coming home soon. 
A lot of people don't know he's gonna be coming home, but yeah, he's gonna be coming good. home. Yeah, yeah okay. man. Okay, okay. Um, it's hilarious because of how young you are. <laughs> like the questions I be having for people, they be grown. <laughs> like I usually would say, what would you be doing if not rap? But since since you are the age you are, I want to know what would you be doing creativity? Creativity. What's the word I'm looking for? Basically, Cre like a plan B. Cre what would you do to create if there was nothing? If there was no music? I'll build an empire of merchandise. Merch. Simple. Start up my own clothing brand and try to get up in, try to get it in as many stores and open up my own store. <laughs> you had that answer, motherfucker, in the chamber, man. <laughs> I like this. That's dude, simple, man. man. I like you, this if dude, plan, man. the way I see it is, if plan A it's don't work, vibes if plan A don't work, you gotta always have a plan B. So that's as a kid, that's what, that's what my parents always told me, like. It's cool to have a plan A and stick to plan A, but if plan A don't work, you always got to have a plan B. But me as a youngin', I'm like, nah, fuck that. My plan A always going to work. So right now, that's why I be pushing. I got my foot on this gas right now. Like, I'm showing everybody my plan A working. And that's how I'm talking to you, you today, man. No, Honestly, yeah. God is good. That's how I'm talking to you today. I most definitely see you. I most definitely see you, and it's working for you. Um... Explain to me what Wilmington is like, but but explaining it to me like like I've never been to America, like I'm Australian, and I get off the plane and I go to Wilmington. What's gonna be my experience? What am I gonna see? I've never touched American land, and I landed in Wilmington. Basically, just picture a little small town. It's a little. It's not even big. It's just a little small town. It's in between Long Beach and San Pedro. It's like right, right in the middle. Like literally right in the middle. Long Beach is right here. Wilmington's right here, and San Pedro's right here. It's like the end. It's way towards the end. So, for a person who never been to Wilmington, you're gonna see a lot of stuff. Like there's certain parts that is sad. You know, you're gonna see a lot of homelessness, bums. They got their little certain sections. You know. And then at night, that at nighttime, that's when that shit get cracking. That's baby, Me <laughs> it's like baby Mexico over there. The taco trucks come out. You got taco stands. And that should be getting lit over there, man. But it's also dangerous too. Like there be a lot of killings, a lot of shootings. So a lot of people gotta stay safe and they gotta stay on their ten toes because you could go, you could make one little turn and you could be already in somebody's hood. You could be already in somebody's block you know so yeah. one little turn like for a person that don't know really know Wilmington like if you make one little right turn you can make that wrong little turn and that should be dangerous out there that's why a lot of people don't you you're not gonna catch that much kids walking like teenagers like me walking you're not gonna catch them walking you okay. you're gonna catch them mostly in a car or with their homies their moms okay. either or okay okay there's a big ass bridge huh yeah um to get if you if you in Long Beach to get there you gotta go. If you in Long Beach, I remember. If you in Long Beach and you trying to get to Wilmington, basically you could take PCH all the way down. Yep. You could take PCH if you, if you ain't trying to go on the bridge and you scared of bridges or whatsoever. Nah, but what's the bridge? Uh, I want to say the Thomas Bridge. The seven. Vincent yeah. Thomas. Yeah. I, ain't that, I wanted to say Thomas. It's the Vincent Thomas Bridge. Okay. 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 And that's the bridge that. Yeah, that shit when, shit. The Vince, the Vincent Thomas <laughs> Bridge. That shit straight, straight. Like basically, Wilmington's right here. So the bridge, it could take you to Long Beach or it could take you to Pijo. That's just basically all connected, bro. That's okay. crazy. Okay. Okay. All time. But the all thing time. is, Wilmington and Long Beach, uh, just cause they close by and stuff. Long Beach ain't part of the Harbor area, you know. So like, yeah. Wilmington, San Pedro. Oh no, it's people, separate. Uh, yeah, it's so, separate. And that, for sure. I know that. Yeah, yeah. so like, and a lot of people don't like. A lot of people may think like they crash heads or whatever, but it's basically neutral. If you yeah. ask me. Yeah, yeah. No, I know exactly what you're talking about. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Off top, man. Hey, before we get up out of here, I gotta ask you, bruh. Your top five, dead or alive, no order, no. You know what I'm saying? Just come up with five. Ooh. That's your top five, man. My top five, and this is Dead or Alive? Dead or Alive, and no order, just five. Five artists that I can associate your name with. All right. The first one will be, for sure, Nipsey, because that was a king. And this, and I'm not going to say because he dead or, or whatever. Like I've been wanting to get a track in with Nip, even that's why, I, that's why I dropped the song called All Money In. A lot of people don't know. 
that before he died, I dropped all money in two weeks before he died. Mm -hmm. And his DJ reached back to me and he was like, yo, this is a song. This this song pretty cool, you feel me? Like, I'm gonna try to get in. That's so tight. it would be Nip for sure, The Game, Fuck it, get blue face on that motherfucker since he's a new wave. <laughs> All right, he's a new blue wave. face on the top five. I'll fuck with you, you nigga. Know, yeah. <laughs> I'll fuck with this nigga. Go and ahead. And then we're going to add Uncle Snoop, because I fuck with Uncle Snoop heavy. And then last but not least, this is this is for my people also. I'll, I'll get a track in with Young Drummer Boy. Mm -hmm. He he's something cold right yeah, now. That nigga nice. Yeah, he cold right now. He, he nice. He on the way up right now. So once he fully blow up, I feel like if I reach out to him, that's gonna be the that's gonna be the person he gonna. I feel like I'm gonna reach out to him pretty soon. You said gonna, he want that drummer boy. Yeah, okay, nah, you let's know make what I mean. Happen. Hey, let's make that happen, man. Hey, you know what? Yeah, that's not only let's make that happen, but. Y'all, y'all know what I, y'all know what I mean when I say this. We're gonna man. have some special guests and special much. surprises for you. But Best check believe this that. out. He one of them ones. Uh, all the A and R's management teams. Go ahead. Like he already got a deal. He already got a situation. I'm gonna let you know that right now. He got a situation. But I will say, when I say they one of them ones, y'all know what happens. My track record is proven. This man is one of them ones. Watch what I tell y'all. Top Shelf Jock, Young Demon. Appreciate ah, you, big bro. Use media. We up out of here.